Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. You know, everybody's telling me that I should eat these chicken nuggets, even if it's just one bite. But I can't because I'm on a diet where I'm trying to eat more healthy, less fattening foods. So, I'm not eating these. No chance. Nope. Just One Bite is the episode where Spongebob convinces Squidward to try a Krabby Patty, and when Squidward does, he becomes secretly obsessed with them. This episode aired on October 5th, 2001, and is actually the first episode of Season 3 to air on TV after Season 3 was renewed. Going by all official numerical lists, Episode 81, The Algae's Always Greener, is the official season premiere of Season 3, but that didn't premiere until March 22nd, 2002. Still, that doesn't change the fact that Season 3 premiered in 2001, officially, almost exactly one year after Season 2 started. And before Season 2 ended, unlike Season 2, which started after all of Season 1 aired at least once. This episode is also known for having one of the most notorious deleted scenes in Spongebob history, a deleted scene at the Krusty Krab involving gasoline and fire. Another episode with a notorious deleted scene is episode 73, Procrastination from Season 2. However, when that scene was removed, an entire minute of that episode was gone, while the deleted scene in this episode, I'd argue was handled much more wisely. Now we'll get into that debate a little later. Right now, let's watch this episode and see how Season 3 was officially debuted to the public. So the episode starts up, and at the Krusty Krab, Squidward was serving Harold a king-size Ultra Krabby Supreme with the works double batter fried. On a stick! But not before Harold forgot his mayo. Squidward thought the food served at the Krusty Krab was disgusting and said he hated Krabby Patties, which Spongebob thought was a hilarious joke. Even telling everybody in the Krusty Krab, and they thought it was funny too, because as they say in Bikini Bottom, The only people who don't like a Krabby Patty have never tasted one. And the only people who don't breathe air are dead. Squidward said that he never had a Krabby Patty and never will, much to Spongebob's shock. He couldn't believe that Squidward had never eaten a Krabby Patty before and tried to get Squidward to have a Krabby Patty right now. Squidward refused to eat it, or go square dancing with Patrick. Mm. Squidward said he'd rather eat his own legs if he only had a Krabby Patty and nothing else to eat. And even though it's good for your soul, he claims he doesn't have one. Swindog kept following Squidward around wanting him to try a Krabby Patty. And after telling him so many times, he cornered Squidward outside with handcuffs, which magically disappear a second later. So Squidward finally gave in. He very slowly took a tiny bite, and he seemed to like it at first. To Spongebob's delight, but then, to his shock, Squidward went on a huge rant about how much he hated the Krabby Patty. Spongebob couldn't understand how Squidward didn't like it, and went back into the Krusty Krab. But as soon as he went inside, Squidward dug up the rest of the Krabby Patty and ate the remains. Maybe it's less of a heart attack now since it's more organic than before. Squidward wanted another Krabby Patty, but knew Spongebob wouldn't stop bugging him if he found out the truth. So he decided to try to sneak one, and then quit for good. Squidward places an order for a triple Krabby Supreme, and Spongebob makes it. Spongebob apologizes for constantly bugging Squidward, but he's accepted that some people may not like Krabby Patties. After the Supreme was finished, Spongebob announced that it was ready, but nobody claimed it, so he thought they left. He then claims the patty as special as that should be eaten fresh. You think every patty is special, Spongebob? So he eats it right in front of Squidward's face, much to his shock, and then goes back to work. A customer who's comedically full throws away a Krabby Patty, so Squidward tries to sneak that one too. But right before he can, Spongebob takes it away from him and cremates it since it was thrown away. Squidward was sad that he still didn't manage to sneak one, but later that night, a giant Krabby Patty shows up at Squidward's house and they form a life together but it turns out it was all a dream. Squidward ran to the Krusty Krab, sneaking past Spongebob's house. When he got there, the camera zoomed in on the patty vault, which was flooded with Krabby Patties. But then Spongebob shows up, saying he comes to work at 3 a.m. to count the sesame seeds. And I thought counting pages in my planner was tedious. Spongebob saw how nervous Squidward was acting with the patty vault open, put two and two together, and discovered that Squidward actually likes Krabby Patties. 
Squidward admitted that that was completely true and started eating every single patty in the vault, despite SpongeBob's warnings. Some of those patties are probably dirty since they've been on the floor. SpongeBob says that eating all the patties at once would go to his thighs and then blow up, which he did. He was rushed to the emergency room with a paramedic who remembers his first Krabby Patty and the episode ends. So that was just one bite. And that is a great episode. This is only the fifth individual episode of season three, and I'd argue that this is the best episode from the season we've discussed so far. It's a simple story, but they did get a lot of good and funny scenes out of it. I don't think I have a number one favorite part from this episode, because it's pretty consistently good throughout. The scene where the Bikini Bottomites pop in to say the phrase is funny, and I like all the silly ways Spongebob comes out of nowhere to get Squidward to try the Krabby Patty. A small detail I noticed on this latest rewatch is when Spongebob pops out of the trash can, his fingers are basically just tiny bananas. I never noticed that till now. Patrick's single shot appearance is funny in this. The dream sequence is also nice here. A rare gem where Squidward isn't haunted by Spongebob in all his dreams. I like how both Spongebob and Squidward are written here. I love Squidward's character arc, where he goes from hating Krabby Patties to actually liking them. You can say him exploding at the end wasn't deserved if you want to nitpick, but I disagree. Squirrel was too stuck up to admit at first that he likes Krabby Patties and tried to sneak one from Spongebob, but Spongebob was able to see right through Squidward's act, and no sooner was that more obvious than when he pulled the patty away right before Squidward took a bite out of it. Yep, it happened way before Spongebob made the face we all make in school to tease somebody about a crush. If Squidward just admitted it from the start, then the rest of the story couldn't happen. This is Spongebob just trying to get Squidward to loosen up a bit. Not like later seasons where Spongebob is too ignorant to realize that his antics are hurting Squidward, whether by accident or not. And even though Squidward admits the truth to Spongebob, he then ignores Spongebob's pleas to stop eating all the patties at once until it was too late. So therefore, the ultimate fate is mostly a result of him not listening to Spongebob. He does know what's best about Krabby Patties and all their effects after all. I also like how Spongebob is in denial at first about Squidward not liking Krabby Patties and when he gets all the other customers in on the joke as well. Aside from that, there's not too much else to say about Spongebob or Squidward in this episode. Circling back to the topic of nitpicks, something that you can't help but ask yourself when you realize it. Why was Mr. Krabs not informed on Squidward not eating Krabby Patties before? And how long have those patties been in the patty vault for? Nah, but really, there is a continuity example I can't help but point out. Squidward says he never ate a Krabby Patty before, but in episode 42, Your Shoes Untied from season 2, he was shown to have eaten a Krabby Patty. Dozens, in fact, and becomes huge from it. <coughs> but to be fair, he didn't willingly eat them. They were flung into his gullet by accident when Spongebob tripped over his untied shoelaces. And he probably didn't care about the taste since he was f pissed at Spongebob. Squidward probably didn't count this since he didn't willingly eat them, unlike this episode. And besides, this doesn't stop the story from working as well as it does. It's just a nitpick that can be brushed off if you can overlook continuity breaks. Even if you can't overlook them, this episode still works. And speaking of working, let's go over the deleted scene. The deleted scene for this episode was included in the original airing and it was at the part where Squidward arrives at the Krusty Krab at night. The scene is available online, so we can discuss it. When Squidward arrives at the Krusty Krab, he sees liquid dripping. He opens the door and it spills. He realizes it's gasoline, and then a robot hand behind him drops a match and it exploded. The same thing happens in the kitchen. Only three months after this episode aired, the scene was removed and replaced with this shot of the camera zooming in on the patty vault, and Squidward walks up to it. At the time, everybody assumed it was cut from the episode due to a catastrophe that occurred a month before this episode premiered. And to an extent, I guess that makes sense. There were two explosions in this episode caused by a gasoline and a match. Hell, that same year, The Amanda Show faced a similar issue. An episode from season 2 featured a skit involving a flaming meteor falling from the sky and destroying a family's house. And as a result, Nickelodeon flat out banned that episode altogether. Obviously, this episode aired before the event took place, but they still had to do something in order to make people forget about it at the time. 
However, in June 2018, current SpongeBob showrunner Vincent Waller confirmed on Twitter that the reason it was removed was because of a standards and practice issue and Nickelodeon being against a gag involving matches and gasoline. If they were so against it, why did they allow it to be included in the episode in the first place? And why did they do it again in 2023 with episode 543, SpongeBob on Parade from season 13? I can understand this scene being removed because it being a little too violent and to avoid the chances of kids seeing this and attempting it at home. And while it's not exactly like the aforementioned Amanda show scene, I can kind of understand the reason for removing it at the time they did. But it would have been nice if it was re-released on home media because unlike the Amanda show episode or the uncut version of Procrastination, this episode was not released on home media with the deleted scene intact. Speaking of procrastination, I also think this episode handled removing its scene much better. To be fair, the gasoline didn't add anything to the story of the episode, and the zoom in is a good edit for reruns. You could cut from Squidward's line just to the shot of the vault, and nothing was really lost. Unlike procrastination, where the scene cuts like this. This is harder than I thought. I can feel those juices pumping now. This scene being removed doesn't eliminate too much of value and keeps the story flowing without too much filler. And it works better from a practical standpoint. Now for comedy's sake, it is a loss. But from a story standpoint, it works. And if I never knew there was a scene removed, I don't think I would have thought twice about this edit. So I think that this episode, for being the first season 3 episode to be released to the masses, it was a pretty good choice. It's a really funny episode, and Squidward has a great character arc. There's not too much more to say about it other than, I like it, and the deleted scene being removed was handled in a better way in this episode. Despite all the bad decisions Nickelodeon's made with Spongebob, at least removing this scene was done responsibly. Just One Bite is a great episode. It's a simple story with some great character development and a lot of funny scenes. It's an episode that any fan of the series can't go wrong with. And you know what? I'll take a break from my diet and eat a chicken nugget now. Ooh. There, I did it. Happy everybody? And now that I got that out of the way... Hey loser, open up! Who is it? The bully from middle school who tried to steal your best friend. <gasps> Run! Damn, I hate that guy so much. I thought I'd never have to see him again after high school. Well, I gotta stay out here for a while till he leaves. The Bully is the episode where a new student named Flats the Flounder joins Mrs. Puff's boating school and Spongebob is worried when Flats says he'll kick his butt. Like Just One Bite, this episode aired on October 5th, 2001 and is the episode that debuts everybody's favorite flounder, Flats the Flounder. Flats is one of those one-off characters from the older years that everybody remembers all too well, like Bubble Buddy or Doodle Bob. But unlike somebody like Bubble Bass, who keeps being shoehorned in the modern seasons and doesn't add anything meaningful to the series after episode 521, The Big Bad Bubble Bass from season 13, Flats the Flounder hasn't had any spotlight roles as of early season 14, and just a handful of background cameos in the modern seasons. Which is nice that he hasn't overstayed his welcome, unlike Bubble Bass. While this was the character's first speaking role, this isn't the character's first on-screen appearance, he had a couple of blinking you'll miss it appearances in two episodes from season 1, episode 16, Sandy's Rocket, and 36, Texas. His name wasn't revealed and he didn't speak until this episode. But with how I remember seeing seasons 1, 2, and 3 as a kid, I think Texas was the first time I saw him at all, and then I saw this episode, which I learned his name from, followed by Sandy's Rocket. So now, let's watch this episode and see how Flats wants to kick Spongebob's butt. Good thing I came prepared. I got my portable DVD player and this disc binder with seasons 1 through 6 on DVD. So the episode starts up at Mrs. Puff's boating school, and Mrs. Puff was late. Spongebob was organizing his pencils, which made loud snapping sounds. Much to Susie Fish's annoyance. 
Mrs. Puff arrived after having an existential crisis and reveals they have a new student, Flats the Flounder. Flats says he likes to kick people's butts, which Mrs. Puff thought was pretty funny. Flats sat down next to Spongebob and Spongebob introduced himself. Flats still wanted to kick his butt, which Spongebob didn't believe until Flats ripped off his chest hair and Spongebob started to become terrified. Mrs. Puff asked Flats to draw a diagram of a four-way intersection, but he drew four different images of him kicking Spongebob's butt and getting him injured. Why is Mrs. Puff even happy? That's not even a four-way intersection. Spongebob ran to the bathroom and hid in the toilet out of fear. Then Spongebob heard somebody coming and acted natural, but it wasn't Flats. Then Flats came in and Spongebob tried telling this fake story about how he himself kicked somebody's butt. But it spoke to Flats saying that he'll now kick Spongebob's butt twice as hard. I... I don't even know what the point of that was. Then the phone rang and Spongebob picked it up. And turns out it was Patrick calling the school thinking it was Pizza Castle and tried to order a pizza. Spongebob tried to explain his situation to Patrick but he was no help because it turns out Flats was Patrick's old friend from community college. Spongebob ran away in fear and asked Mrs. Puff if he could change classes. There's more than one class a day at this school? Mrs. Puff encouraged Spongebob to tell her what was wrong. So Spongebob told her about Flats, so she decided to take action herself, much to Spongebob's relief. After lunch, Mrs. Puff told Spongebob she did talk to Flats, but she used Spongebob's name, so Flats made up a lie saying that where he's from, kicking somebody's butt means that he wants to be his friend, which obviously wasn't true. Spongebob ran away in fear and ended up running into Flats' dad. He told him his situation, but Flats was mad at his dad for talking to strangers. Now with nowhere else to turn, Spongebob ran away in fear with everybody thinking the old man wanted to kick Spongebob's butt. Spongebob hid a garbage can in an alley, thinking that he had to move away and change his name. But Flats overheard the whole thing, so Spongebob ran away and Flash chased him while driving a garbage truck. Is he driving that truck without a license? Then the truck slips on a banana peel and Flats gets injured. He later wakes up in the hospital and learns that Spongebob saved his life. Flats was touched, but he was still going to kick Spongebob's butt. Spongebob ran away in fear again until he reached home and told Gary how scared he was. Then Flats arrived, somehow cured from his injuries in less than a minute, and prepared to kick Spongebob's butt. Gary took out a camera, and Spongebob put on a blindfold. Flats then punched Spongebob, but Spongebob didn't feel it, no matter how hard Flats tried. Spongebob realized he was absorbing Flats' blows due to being spongy. Starting the next day, Spongebob did various activities in his life while Flats was still punching him, including using the bathroom. That basically means Flats was punching a naked Spongebob. Later on in school, Flats finally ran out of energy and passed out from exhaustion. The other classmates cheered and Spongebob made a speech on violence being no good. He ends his speech making a fist and Mrs. Puff walked in thinking that Spongebob beat up Flats and the episode ends with her saying, I'm going to kick your butt. <laughs> oh, that never gets old. So that was The Bully, and that's a pretty solid episode in my opinion. Let's start off by talking about Mrs. Puff's boating school itself. Usually it's only one single classroom, but something that's interesting is how this episode portrays the school more like an actual school, with hallways, lockers, bathrooms, a lunch break, and more than just a single class a day, regardless of how long that class lasted. This isn't the only episode to do something like this, but most of the time, the interior of the school is just this classroom and very little else. While we're on the topic of Mrs. Puff, let's talk about her. I think this is her best appearance in the series yet. Despite how much she goes insane over Spongebob not being able to drive, this episode does show that she cares for Spongebob to an extent, like how she encourages Spongebob to tell her what was stressing him out and how she decided to immediately take action when he tells her Flats wants to kick his butt. It's a great change of pace from how Mrs. Puff usually snaps at him with no hesitation. I wish we could see this side of Mrs. Puff more often in the series. Patrick doesn't do a whole lot in this episode, but I like his lines about Pizza Castle, and the fact that it's revealed that he went to community college in the past is a neat little piece of lore. Now where Flats is from, on the other hand, I don't know. 
and why he was driving this garbage truck, I really don't know. Did he have a learner's permit and was driving without an adult? Did he get a ticket and have to go to boating school to get it off his record? Who knows. I do think Flats is pretty funny though. I like how he's happy over the flowers Spongebob got him and still decided to kick his butt anyway. The montage of Spongebob going about his life with Flats beating him up is pretty humorous and so is the part where the other students literally put on happy faces when Flats is introduced. I also like how Spongebob is portrayed here. I love how Spongebob never held a grudge and still made sure Flats would be alive after his accident. And I like how he doesn't believe Flats at first, but it doesn't take him too long before he realizes how serious Flats was being. Seeing how scared he becomes over time is very relatable. Now I personally never dealt with a bully, at least depending on how you define a bully. And we're talking somebody like Bully Loomer from Nessie Classified School Survival Guide, then yeah, I never dealt with that. I was teased a few times for liking Spongebob in middle school, and there's the guy I'm currently hiding from who tried to steal my friend from me, but nothing like Flats the Flounder. And I can still enjoy this episode a lot despite the theme. And of course, we have to talk about how Spongebob absorbed Flats' punches. I will admit, I wasn't expecting that to happen the first time I saw this as a kid, but I wasn't sure where they were going to take the story at that point once Flats kicks his ass anyway. And while this is definitely the climax of the story alright, it does rise up more questions because Spongebob was shown getting hurt in the past, like the many times he falls down or gets stung by a jellyfish in episode 6, jellyfishing from season 1, or all the pain he feels in episode 54, pre-hibernation week from season 2, from all the extreme activities he and Sandy do together. And the several times after this episode he's shown getting hurt as well. But on a more positive note, his ability to absorb the impact is also shown again twice in Season 8, with Episodes 318, The Way of the Sponge, and 332, Demolition Doofus. But I do kind of wish it was shown more often. Not every single time Spongebob's about to get hurt, of course not, but just more than three episodes. And of course, my favorite parts of the episode are the two times where Harold and the others are pissed at the old man when they think he was going to kick Spongebob's butt, and Mrs. Puff's ending line. But beyond that, I don't really have much more to say. I think the episode is good with a lot of funny and tense sequences and some awesome character moments. I wish I could say more, but I'm finding it hard to come up with more words. But while I'm thankful Flats has never overstayed his welcome, it would be nice to see him return to the spotlight for at least one more episode, as long as it's done responsibly. <coughs> oh, that's real nice. The Bully is a good episode. You got a memorable character, some great character moments, and a lot of scenes that can keep the viewer's attention. There's never a dull moment with this one. Unless you were the victim of a bully yourself. And speaking of which, I wonder if the bully left the house. Nope.